the transition was smooth and the mood reflected in the visuals too. When a beaming and relaxed Tata Sons chairman Natarajan Chandrasekharan met Prime Minister Narendra Modi in a glossy green lawn just before the takeover. Sitting on antique cane chairs across a round glass table on the bright winter afternoon of 27th January, both the leaders are likely to have discussed the future of the airline. Everything went according to the plans, barring a small departure. Tata's love for expatriate CEOs, which is almost as old as the group itself, gave it a little trouble this time. Its decision to select Mehmet Ilkar IG, the former chairman of Turkish Airlines, raised eyebrows in several quarters back home. IG's previous political links with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan led to a row. Erdogan is considered to be a Pakistani ally. IG put an end to the controversy by declining the offer. Last Monday, Tata Sons approved the appointment of Chandrasekharan as chairman of Air India. With this, Air India under the Tata Group has taken off on several new notes. The first big development was the appointment of Chandrasekharan at the helm of the airline. Chandrasekharan, or Chandra, as he is popularly known, would also be the accountable manager of the airline. Regulatory requirements say that CEO, COO or Managing Director should be the accountable manager. Sources told that Chandra's appointment as Chairman of Air India is linked to this very requirement of a senior level executive being named the accountable manager of Air India. Not only that, Chandra leading the airline till a CEO is found also gives confidence to the employees. The accountable manager has corporate authority for ensuring that all tasks of the airline are financed and carried out to the standard required by stipulated law. In other words, the buck stops at the accountable manager's position. We spoke to Jitendra Bhargava, former executive director of the airline and author of the book, The Descent of Air India, to understand the latest moves at Air India. See, let's look at in a chronological order. It was 8th of October when the bids of finance of Tata Sons was approved. So the time process, if you look at it, one would say it should have started on the 8th of October. And it was on 27th January 2022 that Tata has got the control of Air India. So there was sufficient time for Tata's to be thinking about what they plan. Number one. They certainly had a plan to have a chairman who was an outsider, who was in the aviation industry. They went around and then, as we all know, that the former chairman of Turkish Airlines was inducted. After some time, he said, look, I'm not interested in the job. He declined the offer. And Mr. N. Chandrasekhar has been named the chairman of Air India. So what one can conclude fairly accurately is that was this the plan? The answer is no. They certainly right. did not have anybody within the Tata organization who they visualized to be heading Air India after taking control of Air India. They were looking for an outsider to come and run the show professionally. Right. The fact that they have now appointed Mr. Chandra on the chairmanship as the chairman of, chairman of Air India is probably, in my opinion, a stopgap arrangement. While the search for a new incumbent goes on, somebody has to head Air India and put the motion of revival, the process of revival of Air India into action. So my only read this much into it, that Mr. Chandrasekharan is not a permanent chairman to run the airline for a year or two. And let's not also forget, he's got far too many companies under his control. So you need a total restructuring of the management team, which unfortunately, again, has not happened. So that is why I've been ha 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 saying this repeatedly, the time between 8th October 2021 and 27th January 2022 was key that they should have identified the personnel who will take over the functions. And then you would have noticed that bang on 27th of January or 28th of January, Air India was on a revival mission. Now you can't do these cosmetic changes of meals or asking the cabin crew to not go to duty free shop, come on there, etc. What you need to do are taking hard decisions.
even as the hunt for Air India CEO is on, Chandra has his hands full. International travel is resuming from 27th March, which means that Air India will again face stiff competition from foreign airlines on the international front, something which it was insulated against for the past two years under air bubble arrangements. While Air India firms up its much-needed strategic turnaround plans, the new composition of the airlines' board is a sign of things to come. This is how it looks now. While Chandrasekharan is the chairman, Sanjeev Mehta, CMD of FMCG giant Hindustan Unilever, and Alice Vedyan, former chairman and managing director of General Insurance Corporation of India, have been inducted as non-executive independent directors. Air India's four functional directors, finance, commercial, operational and human resource have also been retained as of now. There have been efforts to give the Air India board a corporate makeover earlier too. But the recent changes may give wings to the airline like never before. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.